Hey guys, it's Bub here, and this is the Galaxy Z Flip I bought for just $240. A little bit of background before we get into the actual video, I was trying to buy a broken Galaxy Z Flip for a restoration because I felt like it would be really cool to fix a folding phone. However, the one that I was watching ended up going for way more money than I was willing to spend. While I was shopping for this broken device, I of course needed parts. Most of the broken Galaxy Z Flips on eBay needed a new screen, and obviously finding a new screen for a folding phone is near impossible, I didn't even find one, or if you watched Hugh Jeffrey's video, it cost him a ton of money. So I decided to go for a Google locked Galaxy Z Flip. If I would have bought the broken Z Flip, I would have bought the Google locked Z Flip to use the display from. However, as I read more and more into this Google locked listing, it really confused me a little bit. The pictures showed that the device was on the home screen, so it was still usable, and the device looked in almost perfect condition. There was no noticeable crease on the display, and overall it looked pretty good. And now if you don't know, there are ways to easily bypass the Google lock. So I took a risk and purchased it. So taking a first look at the device taking it straight out of the box, we can see that it is scratched up on the glass surfaces. This is expected considering the fact that cases for this device are really hard to find, and cases that work are even harder to find. This is obviously a used phone, and I was expecting that. However, the biggest area of my concern was that display. The Galaxy Z Flip comes with a plastic display because you can't really fold glass. And if you don't know, plastic scratches at a level 3, which is basically your fingernail. So opening up the display, we can see that it does have scratches on it. There's no deep scratches, which actually kind of surprised me. Holding the power button, we can see the device turn on, and so it works, and so far, there's no display defects. After the device booted up, it went straight into the home screen. There was no lock on the device, so it is completely usable as of right now. However, I obviously wanted to investigate this Google lock. So I went ahead and opened up the settings app and saw that there was an account signed in through Samsung. Clicking on it, they had 20 devices on their account. However, it did have a username and an email. This was actually really good news because that meant there was no actual Google lock that needs bypassed. To remove a Samsung account, all we have to do is reset the phone. And we were going to do that anyway to remove any data that was left over. So I had to shut down the Z Flip and then hold the power and volume up keys at the same time. Once I did this, I could go ahead and release the volume key and we were booted straight into the recovery menu. From here, we could move down to wipe data slash factory reset and then press the power button. Once we did that, it did ask us to confirm this and once we confirmed it, we were on our way formatting and resetting the device. That took probably about three seconds to do. Once that was finished, we could go ahead and reboot the device and set it up like new. Setting up the Z Flip is basically like setting up every other Samsung phone that exists. There's nothing really special about it and I went through this setup with no problems whatsoever. It didn't ask me for a passcode, it didn't ask me for a password, it went straight through like a brand new Galaxy Z Flip. At the end of this setup, it did tell us to avoid pressing hard on the screen. When you fold the phone, make sure there's nothing in it, and your phone isn't water and dust resistant. Basically a ton of things saying, hey, take care of your phone. After using this device for about a few days, I noticed some really interesting things. First off, I really love having the fingerprint scanner on the power button. It is simply way faster than having that in-display fingerprint scanner on the S20. I think the folding mechanism on this display is ridiculously cool, and the fact that you can use the display while it's folded was just something I loved a lot. However, on the display, there are some spots, for example in the top left corner, and on both sides by the hinges, and on the upper right corner right there. So it's not a perfect display because it is a used phone. I really like having that larger display that folds and fits easily in your pocket. Because the phone is locked to AT&T, I cannot update it past Android 10. To update on AT&T locked phones, you need an active AT&T connection, and at this time, I didn't have one. So we were going to have to flash the phone. However, there was another thing that led me to believe why this phone was so cheap. It randomly started crashing. 
Yes, even after a factory reset and a different launcher, the device kept crashing as we can see here. It would randomly freak out, it would crash apps, I had to restart the phone and then it would be fine for about 5-10 to 10 minutes before it would start crashing again. It became ridiculously slow and eventually unresponsive. So the first thing we're going to have to try is flashing it. If flashing it doesn't work, we're going to need to look into the hardware. The first thing we have to do is actually get the Galaxy Z Flip into download mode. This will allow our software of choice, which is Odin, to go ahead and install that new firmware to the device. So to do this, we do have to go back into that Android recovery menu by holding power and volume up. Once we get there, we can go ahead and select reboot to bootloader, which will then put us in that Android download mode. Clicking this will restart the device and it'll bring up a downloading do not turn off target menu. From here we can go ahead and plug our device into our computer and then start the download process. The first thing we need to do before doing anything else is of course downloading the right firmware. This has to be almost precise otherwise you won't have the correctly branded version. And then we had to of course download Odin. Once those both were installed, we could go ahead and extract the firmware from its zip file, and then in Odin, we have to manually select every file. So we have to select the BL file, the AP file, the CP file, the CSC, and the user data. This took a while, especially with the AP file, because it took a while to import. However, once everything was imported into Odin, we could go ahead and click start. Once Odin was finished flashing the firmware, the device automatically restarted and booted straight into the setup. This was like setting up a brand new Z Flip once again, except this time it was running the latest version of Android, which was a good thing. Going through the setup once again, nothing really has changed except the user interface because it is a newer version of Android. However, nothing as in settings really changed, it was the same thing and it was quick and easy. Once we were finished with the Galaxy Z Flip setup, that was it. We were now running Android 11 on a new flashed Z Galaxy Z Flip. After this, the crashing stopped. There was no more crashing on the device. It was like we had a used Galaxy Z Flip with a few display spots and scratched back for $240. And so, just like that, with a little bit of flashing work, we now have a fully functional Galaxy Z Flip for just $240. I honestly did not expect this to go this well. I thought it was a huge risk and we might not even be able to get it unlocked, but to my surprise, it was actually ridiculously easy. And honestly, I don't regret it at all. Having a folding phone is really cool and I believe this technology will eventually grow to the point where it can be used day to day. As for this phone, I don't plan on using it day to day because I'm just too worried about breaking that display as it's so fragile. However, eventually as we get more and more durable folding phones, I would highly consider switching to one because this is really cool. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new around here as I do all kinds of different technology videos including device restorations. With that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.